Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to go outside and I'm going to do an oil change, remove the bumpers, and adjust the valves on my 76 Beetle. Let's go outside and get started. It looks like it has a little oil leak somewhere right here. This might be an aftermarket oil filter adapter because I think I actually put one on my dune buggy at one time and it looks like it's leaking from that seal around that. So I'm going to wipe it all down and then see where it leaks from once it's cleaned up and the oil's changed. I'm going to get a pan now and we'll let the oil out. Okay, even though I don't have to, I'm going to take this ring off, this whole piece, because I do have new gaskets and copper washers just in case it's leaking from around this as well i'll just change the whole thing then i can also check the screen there's a screen up inside here that i can check the oil looks very dirty actually let's let that drain a little this actually looks like somebody put a chrome one on here And then perhaps paint it over it in blue. I don't know why. But I'll clean the paint off. That seems to be stuck. Right, we'll let it drain a little bit more. And see if I can get this plate. This is the screen. I hope they didn't glue it in. Feels like their gasket is glued in. I don't want to bend it. You bend this, you're not going to seal properly. It'll tell you something about the motor if there's, you know, metal in there or whatever. There is some stuff here, but it feels like it's just carbon or maybe some gasket material. Should will use like maybe a little finger of grease around the gasket. Never glue it on because you gotta change it. Now we'll remove this filter. I happen to have, which I believe is the right one, from a different Volkswagen engine. So we'll see if it matches up. It should be on by hand. Seems to be the case. Get some oil out of here. I'll put a little oil in the new filter to prime it. I don't want to get a lot of oil on this camera, so I'm going to shut down and set up to put the plate back and the filter in. Okay, I cleaned it off with a little steel wool, got all the blue paint off. The screen looks okay. That's the new gasket. There's two gaskets and all your new copper washers. So those usually you put a little bit of grease on your finger and wipe it around the gaskets so they don't stick later on and it helps them seal. So I'm going to do that now and we'll go back under the car. Get one of them started. You kind of want to go around in a circle, slowly tightening it so it goes on evenly with even pressure. She's up and tight. And now I'll put the oil filter on. Prime there a little bit, but she's sideways, so you can only prime so much. You really only need to hand tighten a filter. So let's get the oil off so it don't slip in my hands, and then I'll try to tighten it more. That should be good. Not going nowhere. Let me try buy another filter so I have one in stock. I like to check to see if these are tight because it did look wet here. It's metric. Of course. 
course it is. It's a full swing. It's tight. It's tight. Can't even get to it, huh? It's weird. The pan is in the way on the top. It does seem tight. I gotta change the. I gotta change the copper washer on here. Okay. He's coming off. That washer's all flattened out. And I got the new washer. Looks like it's almost like uh, it's thick, so it must compress. I'll say compress. I'll wipe it off. Tighten that up. I'll put some oil in it. Okay, I'm gonna put oil in it now. I think it takes maybe only like two and a half quarts or so, but I'll go by the dipstick. Now. All right, guys, I removed the front bumper. Those are the two brackets. There's three bolts on the body, and there was one center bolt on the ends here for the bumper. That's the bumper that I took off. The brackets. I forgot to video it, but it's already off, and it's what it looks like with it off now. Let's see. Gives you more of a sleek look. I know it's, you know, safety reasons it's there, but I took it off anyway. I just like the look without them. And now we're going to remove the back the bumper as well. This big old bump is going to go. Very easy to remove. And now I gotta check out the brackets. Let me see what I need to get those off. There's one. That's both. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, now I'm going to uh, adjust the valves, and you have to get your engine on top dead center. I don't know if you can see that there. That's this groove right here, and I think this is like five and seven degrees out or something like that. But the center one with the seam in the motor is piston one, and then you can see when you put the cap on this is number one here and it's facing number one right the rotor so we should be good right there and then you gotta come down here and remove I don't know if you guys are gonna be able to see this that good but yeah. Gotta remove this cover and expose the valves. There you go. Make sure it's gonna... Looks pretty clean in there. Now I just need my feeler gauge. I had to run to the store and buy one because mine did not go that thin. So this one does. And you need six thousandths. Point zero zero six. Okay, here we go. Point zero zero six. And then you're supposed to do it by feel in between. I can't even feel these. This is too tight. Well, seems like I can't get it in there, so 
they're probably too tight. I don't know why it's so tight. <laughs> Tighten that up right there. Seems perfect right there. Nice little drag. I'll try this one. I can't seem to get behind it. Oh, sugar. There was one stuck to it. See, it's very, very. That's not good. I had another shim stuck to this shim, making it feel like it was too tight, and I'm over here making it too loose instead. So, glad I saw that. <sighs> this is hard to do on the ground. way too loose. Look right there. Takes a lot of finagling around. Okay. Now we're gonna go to number two. I gotta turn it 180 degrees the motor counterclockwise. Okay, I turned it 180 degrees. And it happens to be a mark at 180 on this motor. And now the rotor is facing back here to this one, which is number two. Because it is going to that side. Yep. Okay, so now we'll do that one. Or at least check it and see if it needs it. Because before, I didn't do it right. That's the sun or something is only coming through the hole. Okay. I feel like I got this side adjusted pretty good with the 6,000 feeler gauge. This little 6,000 feeler gauge. Oh, I did one, now I just did two. And I'm gonna put the cover back on. It doesn't look like it was leaking from here at all. The gaskets seem okay, so I'm just gonna put them back for now and go from there. So, put this back over. Make sure it sits good. And then you just got this thing that's gonna pop in. There it is. That's it, it's that simple. Now we'll do the other side, see what they look like. Okay, we gotta go another 180 degrees counterclockwise. It's hard to do with no hands. The notch right, and it looks like it's going to number three cylinder. All right. It should be here. That looks right. Okay, so we'll go underneath now and do that. I'll do my best to show you what I'm doing. Take this cover off. Guess if that was not in right, it looks like. Nope, it's all twisted. I may have to get it. I might have to use a new one. I don't know if you can see that, but it looks like it was pinched. It wasn't seating properly. I don't know if I can straighten it. If I can straighten it, I'll use it. If not, I have a new set that the previous owner gave me. I think I'm gonna have to use because this is kind of bent up. Okay. Let's see if we can adjust cylinder number three, if it needs it. This one seems pretty good. Let's try this one. I'm not looking for trouble either, you know what I mean? This one's a little loose. Okay. Yeah, it's actually very loose. Loosen this up. Keep it right there, it looks pretty good. <laughs> Sometimes when you go to tighten these things, they move. 
I don't really feel like I'm cutting hairs, but 6,000 is pretty much nothing. This is not easy to do on the floor, I can tell you that. Now it's too tight. Why is it loose? This is the Goldilocks effect. See, that's perfect right there. Little drag. Question is, can I get it to stay there? It's getting a little dark under here. I can get you a light. <laughs> I guess if you really want to make sure you can see if a 7 fits and if it does then it's too loose that's all let's see okay that seems pretty good then tighten those up that one I didn't actually do okay so now we'll go to number 4 I'm going to turn it from up here counterclockwise but that was 7 and it was loose almost left it there very loose Okay, so four is loose. That's pretty good right there. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing. Let me make sure I'm snugged up. Let me check a seven. This one actually fit a seven. It's a little too loose, that means. Okay, looks like I got them pretty good. That was pretty good now. I don't believe a seven's gonna fit in there. No, that's good. We get a new gasket for this. I don't know if you can see that from under there, but this right here was caught and twisted. So I'd rather not use it. They're cheap enough. I'll just put a new one. Besides, the previous owner gave me uh, an extra set, so. Right here, empty, it's a part of My battery's gonna die, so I'm gonna get this on, clip it on, and we'll be done under here. Put a little grease on it. They say it helps, I don't know, but we'll do it. I think there's enough oil on here anyway, but okay, I'll put this back. Let's make sure this thing is all loose. Make sure I don't pinch it as well. I don't know why it's doing that. I don't like it though. I guess it has some kind of play. We'll see if it leaks, but that's sealed. It's only a clip. Alright guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Don't forget to subscribe.